everyone, welcome to another Tyranid Tactical video. In this video we're going to be talking about Tyranid Psychic Powers, my opinion on them, and just uh, what units I think they're most effective on, and when you should keep them or swap them out for your Primaris power. So go ahead and jump right into it. So the first power we're going to talk about is the Primaris power, which is Dominion. Dominion's a blessing that lets you, <coughs> excuse me, um, gives you 6 inches to your synapse range which is great, um, being that our codex is kind of handicapped in regards to instinctive behavior and it's kind of uh, negatively impacts units on the table as I'm sure many of you are aware. So Dominion's great um, to use to keep a large synapse bubble and ensure that all your creatures stay in um, range of synapse and you don't have dogs running away on you or eating each other, car effects is biting one another. Uh, I find the most effective units to use a Dominion with are usually um, Turvagons and Hive Tyrants, I find them best to use them on. Hive Tyrants I find are great being that they fly ahead and they can provide a good synapse bubble. Now this all, <coughs> excuse me, all depends on what powers you um, get in addition to that on the Hive Tyrant, being that he's mastery level 2 and has 2 powers, so it's all dependent on what you get. But uh, I find Dominions uh, definitely at least one unit should have it in your army. I find Zone Thropes is another good option if you roll a, say, Psychic Shriek, which is a power or not Psychic Shriek, uh, Psychic Scream, which is a power that won't be used too often. We'll talk about it just in a little bit here. But uh, swapping uh, that out on Zone Thropes is great, because for, usually for the first turn or two, Zone Thropes aren't in range of too much. So it's good to use them as a nice um, synapse mode. And that way you can provide a good synapse range and use them, prepare to use them offensively, offensively if that's your plan. Or if you want to use them more defensively, Dominion's a great option just to have. So moving on to the first power we have in the Tyranids, which obviously, or debatably, is one of the best powers here, is Catalyst. Now Catalyst gives um, Feel No Pain to a... Uh, friendly unit <coughs> excuse me, within 12 inches, it's a blessing, but now the, the big thing about it is the fact that it, that it gives Feel No Pain to the caster as well. Uh, as most Tyranid players will know, or pre-six addiction Tyranid Codex players would know, is that uh, we lost Bioman or losing Biomancy was huge to us. Um, we These psychic powers kind of make up for it, like Catalyst in my opinion is better than Endurance. Endurance was an old Biomancy power we used, or tried to use. Let me roll that dumb table uh, to get a random power. But uh, anyway, that gave Feel No Pain to a target unit and also it will not die. But the big thing with this one is that it gives you to your caster and to a target unit. So a lot of times you'd be in a debate of do I give this power to myself? Do I give it to a friendly unit nearby? Sometimes it'd be an obvious choice, but sometimes you weren't too sure. This is great because it helps um, you with that choice and also just gives your army a bit more um, survivability on the table as well. Uh, for most units, if I roll Catalyst, or not most, if I roll Catalyst, I keep it. I don't think I've ever swapped, swapped it out yet to date, so, I mean, if you get multiple rolls in Catalyst, that's, say, you roll it three times if you're crazy lucky, that means you get six um, creatures out there, or, or just even units, large units of Gaunts, or monstrous creatures rolling around with Feel No Pain, which is excellent. So, in my opinion, Catalyst is by far the best of our powers, um, it's the one you want to get. So taking a look at our next power is the Horde. Now the Horde is a malediction that has a 24 inch range that makes a target take a, um, a pinning test with the minus two uh, modifier to the leadership. This here is, <coughs> excuse me, it's okay. Um, it's one that I would swap out for Dominion. Debatably, well in most games I would, but it also depends on who I'm playing. I find if I'm playing Tau, I like to keep it, or even against Eldar sometimes. Being that their leadership is not too high, um, especially Tau's isn't very high on, an, on a whole, so I mean you can pin things like Riptides or Broadsides, which is great. Uh, against Eldar actually, it's not too effective being the Eldar leadership on average is 8 or higher. So I guess more so as say Imperial Guard or Tau, being that their general infantry have a lower leadership. Then again, Imperial Guard could have command squads nearby to get them up or whatever. But on a whole, I think it's most effective against Tau. It could definitely help in other times, like I've used it against um, leadership 10 units to actually pin them. It was extremely lucky, but uh, it has its uses. It's not the greatest power, but it's certainly not our worst power.
take a look at next one, which is Onslaught. This one here is a Blessing 24 inch range on um, the targets a friendly unit, obviously it being a Blessing, and allows them to run and shoot. So this is kind of the toned down version of uh, the Eldar's Battle Focus. This one here is um, pretty good that it allows us to run and shoot, obviously. It's great, <coughs> great on units like Hive Guard or Carnifexes, where most people kind of just stay a little bit over range of the Hive Guard, as generally the Hive Guard sit in the middle of the table, and if they're sitting farther back than that, like the target that is, then they're usually out of range of most things, more often than not. And uh, with Onslaught, it allows you to just get that little extra boost and get them. It's also great on Terran effects as well, especially if you have Adrenal Glands. So Onslaught's one I keep, depending on what I'm playing. If I know I'm against a lot of fast units, say against Tau Battle Suits, or against Eldar, um, and I know that there might be some jet bikes or a couple serpents or something like that, um, it's good to keep Onslaught. It lets you get in range and kind of keeps you in the fight with those shooty units where um, speedy uh, skimmers or jet bikes make it difficult to catch. So uh, it's kind of situational. Kind of got to depend on what list you got. If you don't have too many shooting units, maybe Dominion would be a better choice. So you have, you kind of got to gauge it as you go, with as you've seen it's like most of our powers. So next on the list is Paroxysm. I've only got this power a couple times. It's a malediction that uh, subtracts a D3 weapon skill and ballistic skill off target. Um, it's pretty good actually. Uh, against, well, just against most things, um, especially if you get that uh, minus three there, you can render most units shooting pretty ineffective. Um, on a whole, I think I'd keep Paroxysm uh, for the most part. The only units I wouldn't uh, keep Paroxysm on are, say, a Turvigon that might be in the backfield or even um, Zonethropes if I'm using more defensively, being that they probably won't be in range of too many things and just that extra synapse range is a bit more uh, a bit more tempting to get. Which is Psychic Scream. Now Psychic Scream, <coughs> excuse me, is a fairly decent power. Um, on paper it looks pretty effective, but on a whole I don't really know how useful it is. It's a Nova power. Um, this is basically the Doom of Malentai's um, aura that he used to have, but toned down a little bit. Uh, it's a Nova power, <coughs> excuse me, with a 6 inch range, and each target unit um, takes a leadership roll, or you roll 2d6 plus 2 and subtract their leadership. That, um, for the number of wounds that are over the leadership, or the number that are over the leadership, so if I uh, say it's an Eldar Guardian unit, leadership 8, I roll a 2d6 and get a 12 plus 2, that means it's 6 over, so that means they would take, um, Six wounds, and you can't take cover saves or armor saves against this. So it's kind of good in that aspect, but uh, generally most of the time, not too many units will get in there too close for this to work, like say Zonethropes or um, Turvigon. Then again, if you're opening a Turvigon, that could work, but again, extremely situational, nothing you can plan for consistently for it to work, that is, for things to be near the table edge when you Oak Turvigon comes in. But on, say, a flying hive target, I could see the merit there of uh, flying into say near a riptide or something and launching that off but, uh, again extremely situational <coughs> most units I would swap it out for Dominion uh, if I was really good for Synapse and I knew I probably don't need the Dominion I'd maybe roll with it and see how it worked but on a whole it's not it's probably our worst power in my opinion um, I know that'll vary to person to person but I haven't had too much effect with it but then again I haven't used it too much but the games I did have it Nothing really came of it, so take it, uh, take it as you will. So next up is Warp Blast, our last power. This is um, our only actual shooting attack um, power, which is it's Warp Charge two, and uh, it has two profiles. It's basically the Zone Thropes power just stuck into a random psychic power on our table. So <coughs> excuse me, it's the exact same as before. The only difference being that the uh, Lance Shot is now AP2, when it was AP2, AP1. Being at Strike 10, I can't, I'm not going to ever complain about that. Sure, AP1 was excellent, but in a whole, it's still a really powerful shot. Uh, this one here, I 
don't really ever keep this, being that the only really unit that can use it is Swarm Lord, Zone Thropes, or um, Hive Tyrant, being that I want to try, well, depending on what powers I get too, I mean, if I got, say, um, Psychic Scream, then I got that, and I'd probably swap Psychic Scream out and keep Warp Blast, maybe, depending on, again, again, depends on who you're playing against. Um, say if I was playing Elder, I'd probably swap them out and take Warp Blast, being that that Lance shot would be great if I can get there close to um, a Wave Serpent. But then again, they got that annoying Jink or whatever. But anyway, it's it's not a bad power to get. It, it is Warp Charge too, which can eat up your uh, your Warp Charges pretty quick on your Swarm Lord or say Hive Tyrant. But on the Hive Tyrant, if you got Catalyst, I mean, it's a pretty obvious choice what you want to take. And then being that you want to use utilize your Warp Charge too. I would keep um, Catalyst and swap Warp Blast out for Dominion. Just being that you want to, you don't want to have wasted Warp Charge sitting there. Or you, maybe you could keep it and you can save it. Like, uh, save your Warp Charge and use a Blast. But. Anyway, that's my opinion on this um, Tyranid Powers for our 6th edition codex. I find they're pretty good. Um, not, not a lot that I could complain about. Um, definitely not the weakest of all the psychic power charts that have come out. By far, it's not one of the stronger ones, but I can't complain. Um, could be a lot worse. So happy with what we got. It still sucks. That psychic powers are so random, but what can you do? It's the game we play, so accept, accept it and take it what it is. So if you have anything to add, please toss it in the comments. We'd love to uh, hear your opinion and add into the discussion here. Uh, and thanks for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more Junior Tactical videos and more bat reps. Happy Wargaming.